Hi, and welcome to this video on how to set up a Java development environment on your Mac. In this video, I will show you how to set up the Java development kit, some tools that we need, and an IDE. Let's get started. The first thing we need is a JDK or a Java development kit. The one that I'm going to recommend you use is Amazon Coretto. It's a OpenJDK derivative. It kind of builds on OpenJDK, comes with support provided by Amazon, and comes with a handy installer for Mac. So go to the download page. The link to that is in the video description and in the, in the text version of this tutorial. So go ahead and download the package. And once the package is downloaded, go ahead and run it. All right, so just go with all the defaults here, authenticate, and wait for it to finish. And it's okay to move that to trash. We don't need it anymore. Now, the next few things that we need, uh, namely Maven, uh, build, uh, build tool for Mac, and then Node, which is a front-end package manager, are easiest to install, in my opinion, using Homebrew, which is a package manager for Mac. So go to the Homebrew page and paste in this code into your terminal. It'll tell you what it will do, install a bunch of things, press return to do it. And this will take a little while, depending on your connection speed and, and everything. With Homebrew installed, you're now ready to actually install the needed packages. So in our case, we're going to type in brew, install, node, and maven. All right, so we have node and maven installed along with our JDK. Uh, Git should already be installed uh, because Brew installs the Xcode command line tools. So we should have everything we need right now in terms of tooling. And that means that the only thing that we need anymore to start coding is an IDE. An IDE is a code editor. And the one that I recommend that you use is called IntelliJ IDE. It comes with a community edition, which is free and open source and it'll work just fine for all the stuff that we're going to do. Once the download finishes, open up the disk image and install it by dragging it to your Applications folder. Now you can open up the Applications folder and find IntelliJ there and launch it that way. So let's find it here. I have, uh, the, I have the Ultimate Edition installed too, but I'm going to use IntelliJ uh, community edition here. I'll ask you if you're okay with opening it since it was downloaded from the uh, internet. We just did that. We're okay with that. And we can go in here. In case you already have a previous IntelliJ installation, you can choose to import settings. I'm going to show you what it looks like if you don't have anything to uh, import. So you have to agree to the privacy policy. Then you get to choose what you want your ID to look like. I'll choose dark. Uh, if there's any launcher scripts that you want, uh, I'm going to skip this, but uh, because I already have one from before. But if you don't, this is a good thing to add there. That way you can launch IntelliJ from the command line as well. Then select if, uh, any, any build tools or version control tools that you want to have support for. For me, the, the defaults are, are fine here. And then finally, just click Start Using IntelliJ. All right, so now we have a setup here where we can start building our first Java application. Check out my next video on how to import and run a Java application in IntelliJ, how you can debug the application, and how you can use Live Reload in the browser to make development of web-based software that much faster and nicer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.